So hari ni kita proceed sikit lagi uh, With the next elasticity Which is the income elasticity of demand Okay so uh, EY So uh, I already mentioned it to you uh, You need to know the definition This is the definition The responsiveness of the change in Quantity demanded due to the change in income Because uh, income elasticity of demand uh, is to show the relationship between income and quantity demanded when the income changes how will it affect the quantity demanded okay so altogether uh, for income elasticity of demand they have four categories okay which are the uh, normal goods uh, the second one is luxury goods uh, the third one is given or inferior goods and last kali adalah necessity goods so my notes here I already explained everything you can see your notes and you can do your, your reading tapi untuk mudahkan mengajar uh, saya dah buat summary ok so this is the summary ok uh, basically this is the same thing like the notes eh? ok first of all I give the definition because it is a relationship between income and quantity demanded ok Right to see the responsiveness of the change in quantity demanded when we have the change in income. Okay, the formula uh, still sama belah depan Q2 minus Q1 over Q1. Tapi sebelah sini kita akan jadi Y1 because income uh, be represented by Y in the economy. Bukan I, Y. Okay, Y1 and uh, Y represented by income. So, kalau you ingat lagi, last a time when I explain about ED, price elasticity of demand uh, it is the relationship between price and also quantity demanded right ok so uh, bila price changes how will it affect the quantity demand so kat sini quantity and P representing the price so the same formula cumanya sekarang ni untuk income dia akan jadi Y uh, ok so dia terbalik sama juga Q2 telah Q1 kat bawah sini akan jadi Y2 telah Y1 yang sini akan jadi Y1 jadi Q1 ok darab relationship dia ok and then kita ada formula yang kedua uh, if dia tak bagi dua quantity dan dua income ok kita dia bagi dalam bentuk percentage satu sahaja you can use this as the formula the percentage change in quantity demanded bahagi percentage change in income uh, basically this is the definition je uh, kita convertkan into formula ok I told you kita ada four types of good here normal goods, luxury goods, given good and necessity goods ok first of all in terms of the drawing of course you akan ada dua, dua part C, part C X and also part C Y untuk part C Y you kena letak income and kat sini quantity demand sebab untuk income elasticity of demand kita nak tengok relationship between income dan quantity demand so income quantity demand income quantity demand kalau yang ED yang kita explain before this in terms of drawing kat sini because uh, ED adalah to show the relationship between price and quantity demand so kat sini price kat sini quantity demand kat sini price kat sini quantity demand so tadi income so jadi kat sini income quantity demand income quantity demand Okay, so here, kalau fikir logiknya, how will income influence the quantity demand of a person? So, kalau kita lagi banyak income, income tu pendapatan, okay, we will buy more, right? Uh, logiknya macam tu lah. Uh, when income increases, quantity demand also increases. Okay, I'll try to write it here because I don't want to re ruin my formula. Because I already adjust that uh, It's okay Saya letak uh, box je lah senang Okay uh, So relationship dia lebih kepada When the income increases Y increase Y increases Okay Automatically the quantity demand QD also akan increase lagi banyak pendapatan kita ada lagi banyaklah yang kita akan beli ha, so ini adalah the main relationship between income dan quantity demand so basically awak boleh dah teka, uh, awak dah boleh teka dah macam mana rupa diagram dia 
sebab apa kalau uh, yang uh, apa ED uh, which is price elasticity of demand dia ni ok uh, ok eh for ED dia apabila P increases law of demand eh? ok what happen quantity demand akan decrease ha. so that's why demand curve adalah downward sloping macam ni sebab bila harga naik kuantiti akan turun so dia ke bawah harga naik kuantiti akan turun dia ke bawah harga naik kuantiti akan turun so daripada sini dia akan berubah ke sini ha, so dia akan downward sloping that's why uh, the shape tu you akan dapat downward sloping downward sloping demand curve but for for income because the overall uh, relationship dia adalah when income increases quantity demand akan naik that's why dia macam supply upward sloping income naik quantity akan naik income naik quantity akan naik ha, sebab kalau kita tengok supply curve kan ok bila P increases our quantity supply sorry my bad our quantity supply also increases as a seller they are going for profit right so uh, in the line lagi yang tinggi harga lagi banyak yang diorang nak jual that's why harga naik quantity naik so dia akan jadi up sloping up sloping so yang income elasticity tu dia sama macam supply dia relationship dia positif why dengan quantity demand that's why dia up sloping ok so now it makes sense eh? kenapa dia up sloping yang ini saya akan explain kenapa dia jadi down sloping macam demand curve ok so first of all kita tengok uh, kategori yang pertama untuk income elasticity adalah normal goods dia tak ada elastic in elastic eh? untuk income elasticity tak ada dia Kategori dia ni nama dia Normal goods, luxury goods, given goods, national city goods Okay, for normal goods Normal goods ni adalah goods yang you normally purchase uh, Doesn't involve large amount of money to be purchased For example, macam beli baju, clothing uh, Kalau you tengok, for example kat sini Food, newspaper and etc uh, Something yang uh, inexpensive, tak mahal lah Maksudnya you, you purchase on daily basis Atau you purchase on monthly basis You tak perlukan duit yang mahal dan you tak perlu tunggu pendapatan naik baru you beli uh, so this is what we call as normal good so apa yang berlaku pada normal good macam mana relationship normal goods kepada income when our income increase in large amount ok peningkatan income yang sangat tinggi so cuba tengok portion dekat sini the income increases in a large amount uh, what happened to the quantity demanded the quantity demanded increase juga dia follow the uh, the rules here when income increase quantity demand increase but the increase in quantity demand is uh, just a, a little uh, sikit je tak naik banyak a small changes in quantity demand uh, because here normal goods you don't need to wait until your income increases so people don't anticipate until our income increase baru kita beli produk tersebut for example you nak beli clothing and beli baju so you tak perlu tunggu sampai akhir okay, tahun dapat bonus baru nak beli baju sebab kalau nak beli setakat t-shirt RM10 tu you can purchase tak perlu tunggu income pendapatan naik pun you boleh purchase uh, so even though our income increase in a large amount uh, for normal goods the per, uh, the amount to be purchased Chase, tak akan meningkat dengan sangat mendadak dia cuma naik dengan sedikit maksudnya dia tak responsif less responsif to the change in income uh, ok uh, buyer is less responsif to the change in income so 
buyer is uh, less responsive to the change in income maksud dia tak, dia tak menunggulah income naik untuk beli barang tersebut ok so uh, indicator dia kalau kita nak tahu dia bawah kategori normal goods ataupun tak bila kita dah buat calculation menggunakan formula ni ok kalau soalan tu pasal income less list of demand uh, bila you dapat nilai yang EY less than 1 bigger than 0 so bigger than 0 bila that the number is positive right tapi dia less than 1 maksudnya nombor dia a positive number between 0.1 until 0.99 ah okay so the coefficient of elasticity is greater than 1 press eh? uh, i'm not sure what happened here or oh, i don't think this one is correct cuz i i did not change this one wait eh uh, income elasticity for normal goods normal goods here uh, ok here this is the correct one uh, percentage change in income is more than percentage change in quantity demand when income increase, the quantity demanded increase in the smaller amount compared to the increase in income. The good is normally purchased regardless there is an increase in income or not. Uh, so, as we mentioned, say, buyer is less responsive to the change in income. Okay, buyer tak, tak menunggu income naik baru nak beli produk tersebut. Okay, uh, yang kedua adalah luxury goods. Okay, so for luxury goods, okay, so this is uh, uh, the same. Okay, uh, I need to do some adjustment here. Uh, I'll continue afterwards. Okay, sorry, seperti lari kerja. Okay, alright. So here, as you can see here, for luxury goods. The percentage change in income is less than percentage change in quantity demand. Maksudnya, uh, uh, when the income increase, even though there is only a, a small increase in income, it will result to a larger increase in quantity demand. For luxury goods, ini adalah barang-barang yang mewah. Contohnya, for example, antique furniture, luxury cars, and etc. Uh, jewelry, and etc. So, this type of good, people... Uh, to, uh, because it's expensive, people are waiting for their income to increase before they start buying it, this type of good. So, contohnya, bila mana kita nak beli benda tu, kita akan beli timing uh, akhir tahun bila dapat bonus ataupun uh, bila, for example, macam musim coronavirus ni kan, uh, kerajaan bagi inisiatif uh, untuk moratorium tu kan, moratorium tu, uh, kita dapat uh, apa exemption from paying the personal loan for paying the housing loan, the the, the car loan, so meaning that we have extra money, so bila ada extra money, meaning that ada increment in income of the people lah, so bila kita ada pendapatan yang lebih, untuk, untuk orang yang memang bukan terdesak untuk guna duit, uh, masa ni lah dia orang akan start mencari barang-barang yang luxury, yang mahal untuk dibeli, uh, so uh, untuk luxury goods, dia lebih responsif, more responsif to the change in income lah. Uh, when income increases, the quantity will increase in a larger amount compared to the increase in income. Buyer uh, is more responsif. Memang buyer tunggu income naik baru nak beli. Okay, I think I need to change the size. Okay. Alright. Okay. Yes. Um. Okay. Uh, jangan salah faham, ada student salah faham 
uh, income dia naik sikit je medium uh, they don't have much money how can they buy luxury good luxury good as expensive uh, bukan maksud macam tu eh uh, yang salah faham dia bukan bermaksud income naik sikit dia bermaksud sekiranya ada peningkatan income je orang akan start to anticipate and start buy luxury goods uh, because masa tu people ada orang kata um, uh, kuasa untuk membeli dah um, uh, untuk luxury goods lah because kita hold buy luxury goods because luxury goods is expensive Dan, uh, masa bila kita decided to buy luxury goods when our income is increase ok alright so macam mana you nak macam dia bawah kategori luxury goods uh, uh, look at the uh, coefficient after you calculate using this formula if you got your answer more than one jawapan dia satu dan ke atas one and above then dia akan duduk jatuh bawah kategori luxury goods while the third one is given ataupun inferior goods ok what what is given at all inferior good given ni adalah goods yang orang kata low quality low class for example bundle goods uh, pakaian-pakaian kat bundle ok so pakaian-pakaian kat bundle ni of course ada ada je orang kaya yang beli kat bundle tak ada masalah tu itu adalah real life right uh, ada je orang yang jenis berjimat yang prefer going to the bundle instead of to the boutique tapi yang saya nak bagi tahu kat awak ni uh, uh, ini adalah barangan yang orang kata kalau boleh kita kita ada kuasa untuk beli we don't want to buy this type of good uh, going to the bundle we don't want kita keluar duit kita memang nak beli barang baru siapa yang nak beli barang yang dah, dah pernah digunakan uh, so this is given or inferior goods for example buy a second hand car kalau orang ada option untuk beli new car kenapa dia nak beli second hand car uh, so for this type of good dia ada inverse relationship with income Sebab itulah, diagram dia downward sloping. Bila income naik, quantity demand akan turun. Ya, when income increases, the quantity demanded decrease. It has a negative relationship. The, the good will not be bought uh, when the income increases as the people will avoid this type of good when they have more income. So, bila ada je peningkatan dari segi pendapatan seorang, uh, seseorang buyer tu, uh, they will decide not to buy a given good. Uh, they, uh, for example dulu dia kerja jaga gaji seribu setengah kan so dia tak mampu that's why dia beli kereta second, ha uh, second hand all of a sudden uh, dia berjaya menjadi usahawan uh, uh, dan income dia dah tak seribu setengah dah uh, dia dapat sepuluh ribu sebulan orang rasa dia akan pakai kereta second hand lagi mostly tak lah uh, sebab dia dah mampu nak pakai kereta baru uh, so the consumption of uh, given good or inferior good akan berkurang sekiranya income meningkat so macam mana kita nak cam dia bila you kira you dapat less than zero maksudnya nilai negatif lah nombor yang nilai dia negatif uh, untuk EY you tak boleh abaikan negatif eh? kan hari tu I already told you kalau ED dia mesti ambil dalam bentuk absolute value sebab jawapan dia confirm kalau you kira nanti for ED guna this formula the answer will be negative uh, so that's why kalau you nak compare kan dia duduk bawah kategori elastic ke inelastic unitary ke and so on uh, you kena ambil dalam bentuk absolute value abaikan nilai negatif untuk ED sahaja untuk ES tak untuk ES uh, memang tak akan ada nilai negatif dia akan sentiasa jawapan dia nilai positif ha. but for EY ok Kalau ada nilai negatif, jangan abaikan. Dia memang akan ada. Ha, so, yang tu sebab EY ni tak ada kaitan macam ED. So, kalau you dapat answer, your your calculation for income elasticity of demand and then you got your answer uh, negative, mean that uh, it falls under the category of given or inferior goods. So, uh, salted fish, ha, for example, ikan masin lah. Ini, ini contoh dalam buku. Uh, biasanya, orang tak akan resolve eating ikan masin kalau dia ada kemampuan untuk beli daging, beli ayam and so on ok, and last kali adalah necessity goods so necessity goods ni adalah uh, goods yang kita uh, apa consume on daily basis uh, yang kita sentiasa kena ada to sustain our living ok, when income increases what happen here, this one is straight line macam ni, income increase in a large amount there will be no change in the quantity demanded. Jumlah yang kita demand uh, still sama nilai dia. Uh, because this good is not affected by the change in income as people buy this good in the same amount regardless the change in income. 
Contoh je macam necessity goods ni, kalau for example dia kata salt. Uh, the, consumption, the consumption of uh, salt is still the same even though the income increases. So, kita tak akan tambah uh, uh, jumlah garam yang kita makan semata-mata sebab income kita meningkat daripada RM1,000 ke RM2,000. Uh, biasa kita masak, kita letak sesudu kecil garam. Ta- uh, bukan sedikit secubit garam. Sebab income meningkat, kita tak letak segu, uh, sesudu garam bes, sesudu besar garam kan. Tak ada. Uh, kalau you biasa makan nasi, biasa tiga pinggan, uh, tiga, uh, tiga kali sehari uh, disebabkan income naik, takkan you makan nasi sampai sepuluh kali sehari. Tak. Uh. So, itu adalah uh, bawah kategori necessity goods. We don't change our consumption due to the increase in income. Jumlah dia still sama. Uh, uh, so, that's why uh, this constant constant. Uh, the change in quantity tak berubah. Okay. So, macam mana nak tahu kalau barang tu duduk bawah kategori uh, necessity goods. Bila you calculate, you akan dapat EY equals to zero. Uh, okay. Alright. So, that's it for income elasticity. And last kali kita tengok untuk cross elasticity. Uh, so, cross elasticity ada tiga. Oh, sorry. Uh, kita go for the example sekejap. Okay. Okay. Uh, for example, the following table shows the F vertical demand of good uh, A and good B at a given price of good A and consumer's income. I don't know the consumer's income, right? Uh, so, you can see here. Okay. And you can take it. Sekarang ni, dia bagi tahu ada dua quantity demand. Quantity demand untuk A and quantity demand untuk B. So, you tahu EY adalah relationship between income and quantity demand. So, dia tak boleh tambah eh, because these two goods adalah goods yang berbeza. Good A dan good B. So, maybe dia suruh cari income elasticity untuk good A satu. Sorry, untuk good A satu and income elasticity untuk good B juga. Ha, macam gitu. So, dia adalah uh, maksudnya kalau dia suruh cari dua, uh, ada dua ila, uh, income elasticity lah kalau dia macam tu. Ha, dia, dia bukan tambah macam chapter 2 tu. Ok, so in this case dia kata calculate the income elasticity of good A. Ha, so dia dah bagi tahu dah. Dia nak good A. Income elasticity of good A. So, jadi apa yang you perlu ambil, you kena ambil quantity demand untuk good A lah. Ha, the income and quantity demand for good A. Ha, so this one uh, this row with this row. Sorry. Uh, this row with this row. Uh, this uh, the information here and here. So it mentioned here, uh, income increases first from a uh, thousand to a thousand five hundred. So a thousand ni akan jadi y satu. Yang disebut udah bulan tu akan jadi y satu. So y satu seribu akan jadi y dua. So kalau daripada table, kalau seribu y satu uh, yang uh, quantity demand A tu yang seratus lima puluh tu akan jadi Q satu. Seribu setengah adalah y dua seratus tiga puluh akan jadi Q dua. Okay, so Q1 150, Q2 is 130. So, we put the figure into the formula. So, make sure you write down very detail like this lah sebab everything ada markah ni. Ni setengah markah masukkan nilai setengah markah. Bagi jawapan satu markah, bagi kategori setengah markah balik. Uh, so, make sure you put the formula correctly lah. Kalau you letak kat sini P instead of Y, you tak akan dapat markah for the formula. Okay, so make sure you calculate sebelah punya belah. Okay, so kat sini you dapat eh, nombor kecil tolak nombor besar kan. So, nilai dia negatif. So, at the end of the day, you dapat negatif. Ha. Jangan abaikan sebab EY will not neglect the negative sign. Cuma ED sahaja yang neglect the negative sign. So, apa yang negatif tadi kita dah bagi tahu kan. Yang negatif, kalau dapat nilai negatif EY less than zero, means that dia adalah bawah kategori given good. Ha. So, barang tu kita boleh tahulah dia adalah given good. Ya, so, kalau logik je pun kalau you tengok kat sini kan, you boleh you boleh fikir sendiri pun. Bila income naik daripada seribu kepada seribu setengah, kuantiti tu menurun daripada seratus setengah kepada seratus tiga puluh. Maksudnya, orang decided not to buy the product. Maksudnya, kita boleh dah boleh buat kesimpulan dah. Barang A ni, good A ni, mesti barang yang given, yang low class, low quality product lah. Sebab tu bila income meningkat, people decided not to buy. Uh, daripada situ pun, you dah boleh tahu dah. Sebab relationship dia kan sepatutnya positif kan. But when the income increases, the quantity should increase. Quantity demand should increase. Okay. And example tu lah. Uh, like I told you, kalau dia tak bagi dalam bentuk dua kan, Uh, kalau macam ini kan kita ada dua kan. Satu income pertama, income kedua. And then kita akan ada quantity pertama dan quantity kedua, right? 
Tapi kalau dia tak bagi dalam bentuk macam tu, dia, dia cuba bagi satu nilai sahaja. Dan uh, dalam bentuk percentage. For example, dia kata, if the income increases by 10%. Ha, maksudnya kita tak adalah Y1, Y2 kan. Kita ada cuba ada one, uh, one value here, 10%. Okay, and the quantity demand of cream puff, you demanded increases by 5%. Uh, so, you kena pakai formula ni. Uh, percentage change in quantity demand over percentage change in income. I already mentioned it tadi kan. Uh, so, kalau tak boleh pakai formula ni sebab maklumat tak cukup, you akan pakai formula ni. Per per peratus perubahan quantity demand bahagi due to tu disebabkan bahagi peratus perubahan income. Ya, okay. So, apa yang kita akan buat adalah kita tengok simbol apa yang nak kena letak. Jadi, so, kita tahu increase. So, bila increase, maksudnya positif. So, positif. Uh, kalau uh, increase, ini pun increase. Increase meningkat, bila tak positif. So, uh, income increase 10%. Income dah kat bawah. So, tambah 10. Lepas tu, quantity demand increases by 5%. Tambah 5. Duduk dalam atas. So, 5 bahagi 10%. Uh, plus 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 habis 0.5 So 0.5 duk bawah kategori apa Dia adalah antara uh, Apa uh, uh, Lebih kecil daripada 1 Lebih besar daripada kosong So within that uh, This type of code ni carry path adalah Normal code uh, Dia bukan luxury code lah logic lah kan Carry path adalah normal code You don't need to wait until your income increase Before you buy you purchase Uh, so ada student dia fikir logik Dia kata curry pop ni makanan Dia boleh lebih kepada necessity goods uh, Macam ni lah because we are learning about Theory uh, You stick to the theory Real life application logical Memang kadang-kadang tu is illogical Okay jangan buat pening-pening Kita just stick to the uh, Apa situation je Okay uh, take it as simple as you can Okay and last kali Kita go for the cross elasticity of demand Alright, so cross elasticity of demand, like I told you, bila disebut cross, bila that, you would like to see the relationship between two types of product. Uh, harga barang yang lain dengan quantity demand barang yang berlainan. Okay, the responsiveness of the change in quantity demand of good B due to the change in price of good A. Ha, nampak tak? Two types of product. Good B untuk quantity demand. Good A untuk quantity uh, untuk harga. So, this definition will change according to the question. Kalau question pakai M, good M price K. Ha, so, for, uh, definition dia akan jadi the responsiveness of the change in quantity demand of good M due to the change in price of good K. Ha, you must follow the question. Okay? So, dia ada tiga Ha, dia ada substitute good, dia ada complementary goods and last kali dia ada unrelated goods. Okay, same like the nota here, you can read on your own. Uh, I bought summary. Uh, so, I have the summary. Okay, so here untuk cross elasticity is relationship between two types of good but relates with quantity demand. The price of one product to uh, the quantity demand of uh, a product to the price of another product. Uh, ok, barang yang berlainan So, in terms of formula Sebab saya pakai quantity demand good A So, formula saya akan jadi QA2 So, the same formula Cuma kita letak alphabet A je lah QA2 minus QA1 over QA1 Untuk price, price adalah price B kan So, jadi saya pakai PB1 PB2 minus PB1 So, the same formula sama macam sebelum-sebelum je Kita cuma letak alphabet je Nak menunjukkan itu adalah uh, Cross elasticity And kalau dia tak bagi dua harga, dua quantity demand, dia bagi dalam bentuk percentage, this is the formula, sama je, the percentage change in quantity demand of good A due to bahagi kepada percentage change in price of good B. Okay, so let's look at the first one, substitute goods. Substitute goods ni, kalau kita dah belajar kan, substitute goods adalah barang yang pengganti. Bila that, if you don't buy that product, you will buy another product. Okay, this is in terms of the buyer. Uh, Alright, so uh, for the drawing, uh, you kena letak uh, price and quantity demand. Tapi, dia mesti price satu barang lain. Quantity demand untuk barang yang berlainan. Dia dah kena duduk satu diagram. Uh, two special untuk 
cross elasticity. Nasib gus ya, harga barang lain, quantity demand, barang yang berlainan. Harga barang lain, quantity demand, barang yang berlainan. So, everything ni akan uh, according to the case lah. Okay, for substitute goods dalam kes saya ni, saya ambil barang yang substitute, contohnya fish and chicken. If we don't eat fish, we will eat chicken. So, in terms of my diagram, saya ambil price of fish. Jadinya, untuk quantity demand, saya kena letak quantity demand of chicken lah. Sebab substitute saya antara fish dan chicken. Tapi kalau you don't like that, you nak letak price of chicken pun boleh. Jadinya, quantity demand of fish. Ha, so, up to you. Alright. So, here, when the price of fish increase as a buyer, you will buy fish or not? Do kan? Kita tak akan belilah fish sebab fish is expensive. Kita akan substitute mencari yang lebih murah. What happen then? Dia akan menyebabkan quantity demanded of chicken meningkat. Sebab sekarang ni fish mahal. We don't buy fish. Kita akan substitute and we will buy chicken. Uh, so that's why if the price of fish increases, the quantity demand of chicken akan naik. Sebab itulah dia akan jadi upward sloping macam supply curve. Sebab dia ada positive relationship antara dua ni fish and chicken bila harga fish mahal kuantiti uh, chicken akan meningkat dan vice versa dia boleh jadi juga kalau for example dia kata harga fish turun so kalau harga fish turun you will buy fish right so what happen to the quantity demand of chicken dia akan berkurang dia akan shifting inward eh, bukan shifting inward sorry dia akan uh, uh, apa move ke dalam Okay, so anak pandai dia akan turun ke bawah Dia pun akan turun ke bawah So dia ikut searah Kalau naik, dua-dua naik Kalau turun, dua-dua tu akan turun Okay, for example Chicken and fish are substitute goods If the price of fish increases The demand for chicken will also increases uh, The demand of chicken will increase This is because people will reduce the consumption of fish As the price is expensive And will substitute fish with the less expensive chicken Very simple Okay Uh, sorry, I, I forgot to change this. Complementary. Complementary goods. Okay, and last kali adalah uh, unrelated. Okay, untuk complementary goods. Okay, dan juga unrelated goods. Okay, second one is we look at the complementary goods. I already told you, masa kita belajar chapter 2 kan. Complementary means that the goods must be bought together, must be used together. For example, pen and ink. A pen without ink, dia tak ada guna. Battery and torchlight. Kalau kita beli uh, torchlight tanpa battery, dia tak ada guna. So, in this case, saya pakai uh, example saya, torchlight dan juga battery. So, bila saya letak di sini harga, better, uh, harga torchlight, kat sini mesti quantity demand of battery. Okay, so in this case, uh, uh, saya punya case scenario adalah when the price of torchlight is expensive, mahal, meningkat. So, kita kalau beli torchlight, we would like to buy, uh, uh, kita akan beli battery juga lah kan. So, in this case, bila harga torchlight is expensive, we will not buy torchlight, betul tak? So, when we don't buy torchlight, we would also buy battery. Tak beli torchlight, buat apa nak beli battery? Sebab tu quantity demand untuk battery akan turun. Shifting inward. Eh, bukan shifting kan? Eh? Move to uh, to the left. Okay. So, here dia akan jadi bentuk dia macam satu naik, satu turun. Macam demand lah. Uh, relationship dia inverse. Harga dan quantity tu inverse relationship. Okay. When the price of torchlight increases, the quantity demand of battery decreases. So, Uh, for example, battery and torchlight are complementary goods. If the price of torchlight increases, demand for battery will decrease. It's because people will reduce consumption of battery as the price of torchlight is expensive because people use torchlight together with battery. We don't buy torchlight, we won't buy battery. Okay, and last kali adalah unrelated good. Barang yang tidak ada kaitan langsung. For example, dalam kes ini, saya bagi contoh, saya ambil shoes and pen. Uh, kasut dan pen. Tak ada, tak ada kaitan dengan awak tak simpan kasut dalam, eh sorry, awak tak simpan pen dalam kasut. Kalau ada orang yang simpan pen dalam kasut tu dia uh, macam pelik sikit lah. You kena uh, uh, hantar consultation ke whatsoever lah. Okay, so basically uh, this type of good has no relationship at all. Uh, so what happened here, even though the price of shoe increases in a large amount, what will happen to the quantity demand of pen, nothing will change. Straight, static. The amount is consistent, constant here. 
when the price of shoe increases the quantity demand of pen is unchanged because this good is unrelated tak kaitan pun uh, okay so for example pen and shoe are related good if the price of shoe increases the demand for pen will not change it's because these two goods are unrelated the change of in price of one good has no effect on the other goods so macam mana you nak tahu kategori apa yang dia you kena hafal you kena ingat kalau nak tahu dia bawah kategori substitute ke bila you kira menggunakan formula ni you akan dapat EX bigger than 0 bigger than 0 maksudnya nilai yang you dapat tu nilai positif jawapan you positif 1 ke 2 ke 0 sampai 1 sampai lah seterusnya dia pun positif dia akan jadi bawah kategori substitute goods dia akan tanya relationship between goods tu apa kalau uh, complementary pula bila you calculate you dapat akhir you is less than zero. Less than zero maksudnya nombor negatif lah. Bila you dapat nilai negatif, then dia akan duduk bawah kategori complementary goods. Maksudnya relationship antara dua produk yang you tengah kira tu adalah barang yang complementary. Barang pelengkap antara satu sama lain. And last kali kalau you kira you dapat kosong, uh, relationship untuk between those two goods are unrelated goods. Dia adalah produk yang tidak berkaitan. Okay, so let's look at here. In terms of the calculation. Alright. So, dia beritahu kat sini. The following table shows the hypothetical demand for goods A and B. So, uh, kalau you perasan, I just use the same uh, example all over again. No, cuma information saya ada banyak kat sini. Uh, so, sekarang ni sebab kita nak belajar cross kan. Kalau you ambil price of A dengan quantity demand of A, dia akan jadi price elasticity of demand ED. Bukan jadi cross. Kalau you ambil uh, quantity dengan income, dia akan jadi Income elasticity of demand. Uh, so, here kalau nak jadi cost, option yang you ada adalah satu je lah. Ambil harga A dan quantity of B. Uh, je lah. Yang B and yang D. Dia akan jadi cross. Use this information and this information. Sebab this only two things yang berbeza barang. Income tak adalah sebab income untuk income elasticity. Okay. So, here dia beritahu. Calculate the cross elasticity of demand for good B when the price of A increases from 3 to 5. Okay, so yang disebut bulu-bulu tu adalah P1, PA1. Yang disebut yang second tu adalah PA2. So, PA1 3, PA2 adalah 5. So, 3 eh. Ha, so, tengok kat sini. Kalau 3, quantity demand of B adalah 30. So, ini akan jadi QB1. Ini adalah PA2. Ini akan jadi QB2. Okey, seperti yang tengok sini, QB1 30, QB2 60. So, kiraan dia be very proper sebab setengah markah the formula, make sure you betul. Sebab dalam kes ni pakai A and B, letaklah QB2 tolak QB1 bagi QB1 darab PA1 tolak bahagi PA2 tolak PA1. So, 60 tolak 30, selesaikan satu-satu, 1 darab 1.5. And then you dapat EX equals to 1.5. So, 1.5 adalah nilai positif, right? Ha, maksudnya EX lebih besar daripada kosong. So, relationship antara dua types of code ni, A dengan B ni apa relationship dia? Dia adalah barang substitute. Kalau dia suruh bagi example, awak boleh bagilah contoh-contoh barang yang substitute. Milo and coffee, pizza hut and McDonald's, uh, apa? apple and orange, ha, yang you pilih. Okay? So, here saya pun dah tahu EX will not neglect the negative sign. Okay, so example 2 Kadang-kadang uh, dia tak bagi 2 Tak ada 2 quantity, tak ada 2 price kan uh, So what happened there Awak kena pakai formula ni Percentage change in quantity demand of good, uh, of chicken Percentage change in price of fish Dalam kes ni sebab saya tak bagi dalam bentuk representis uh, alphabet kan Saya pakai chicken and fish So kalau you tak nak, malah tulis panjang You boleh uh, uh, representkan chicken uh, sebagai C Fish sebagai F. Q demand for C. Uh, price of F. Ha. Okay, so dia beritahu kat sini. Uh, oh, yang ni lain sikit setai soalan dia. Uh, sebab dia kata, dia dah bagi tahu dah. Uh, jawapan, kalau cross elasticity untuk fish and chicken adalah 2. So, jawapan EX adalah 2. Okay, so dia kata sekali, uh, 2% increase in the price of fish. So, sebelah bawah ni kita tahu dah. Uh, change in price of fish adalah 2%. Increase tu maksudnya positif. Positif 2. So, kita tak tahu nilai A berapa. Uh, so, nilai A ni yang kita nak tahu. Dia kata, dia nak tahu berapakah peratusan perubahan quantity demand of chicken. 
Okay. So, bila kat sini bahagi, bawa, bawa ke sini, okay. Darab. So, 2 darab 2 equals to A. A equals to 4. Ha, so, kalau you tak percaya, 4 bagi 2, dapat 2. Betul kan? Dapat A x equals to 2, right? Ha, so, for here means, uh, uh, 4, here means 4% increase. Sebab nilai dia positif, maksudnya 4% increase in quantity demand of chicken. Okay, so we have uh, lots more question there. You may try. Uh, saya bagi soalan lagi kan. And then saya ada bagi soalan-soalan uh, objektif juga. Uh, you boleh check whether you faham ataupun tak. Uh, I have all the answer but you must try. Barulah you tahu you faham atau tak. Okay, so uh, please try and any question please ask in the group WhatsApp.